Welcome back to a new series, okay? Walk or Talk, Stephen to Paul. So this is kind of like an intro as well as the first study that we're going to be doing together. So God has been showing me some stuff, and my wife and I, he's shown us both great things in our studies together as well as on our own. And just got really motivated to do a walk and talk, okay? Walk or talk, question mark. There's a time to walk, there's a time to talk, and oftentimes they both go hand in hand, okay? Uh, 3 John 1, 4. Okay? I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Talking about walking in truth. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Talking about um, the walk. Okay. Now, we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation, okay, to preach the gospel, talk. But what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to go out and preach the gospel, walk. So there's a lot of interesting things we've seen in here, and I thought what better place to start at than Paul. So we're going to turn to Acts chapter 6, verse 5. Acts chapter 6, verse 5. And we're going to start with Stephen. Remember, it's Stephen to Paul. Because this plays a very important part and seeing Paul's life. Chapter 6, verse 5. Let's get started. And the same, let's see. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and um, Prochorus, and Nicant Nicanor. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And Timon and Parmenius, I'm just butchering this. And Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith, the walk. They were ordained. And Stephen went out and preached, and uh, the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. Now eight, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Walk. Then, though, then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. The talk. See, Stephen wasn't just talk, and he wasn't just walk. He was both. They go hand in hand. Then, verse 11, Then they sub suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Basically, they got guys to come forward and lie. False witness. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man seeth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfast on him saw his face as if it had been the face of an angel. Okay, you got people coming out against him. you got people coming out against you, brothers and sisters in Christ. But the point of this is the setting is Stephen was ordained, sent out, and he wasn't just talk, he did the walk. Walk and talk. Okay. We're going to jump down to seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 54. 
Stephen goes through and he talks about Moses, he talks about the law, how these are false what they're saying, and he does preach to them, talk. But 750, chapter 7, verse 54, let's see the reaction. Uh, 54, when they heard these things, talk, to, um, Stephen is talking to them. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They didn't like what he had to say. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. I wonder if they're trying to pull one of these things. I'm not listening. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord, they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. Um, so Stephen was definitely about the walk as well as the talk. He died for Jesus Christ. But there's two points in verse 58 that I want to talk about. And the main point is, um, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, that's point one, whose name was Saul. First time we get to hear about Saul. But I was curious because it said, lay down their clothes at the young man's feet? I don't, I don't get it. Um, the law requires as if to impress on witnesses their solemn responsibility that they should be first if the accused were condemned to death to take part in his execution. Bottom line, the witnesses were to cast the first stone. They saw the person, they were trying to say, we're witnesses, he did this, he said these things. They were the first person to throw the first stone. And the reason they laid their clothes, where it says they laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul, was because they wore huge garments, overgarments, and it would impede their ability to throw the stone. So they take them off. They already had to come before Saul uh, because they're the witnesses. So they took their clothes off and put them down on the ground before Saul and they had to throw the first stone. So I found that quite interesting. But the other thing is, is they had to come to Saul. In other words, Saul was condoning of everything that was going on. Saul was just as responsible for Stephen's death. So this first mention of Saul. So Stephen was about the walk and he's about to talk. Both go hand in hand in Stephen's situation right here. And we'll be going throughout the whole Bible in as many series, as many things as God will show me, and talk about different situations. But in this situation, Stephen stood up to him and preached truth, no matter what the cost was. And it ended up costing him his life. So we talked about Stephen and how we first get introduced to Saul. Now we're going to turn to Acts 8, 1, which is, should be on the same page or the next page. Acts 8, 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Saul was saying, we're doing this. It was right. It was just. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, hauling men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Now I want to throw that in there because you have Saul, he's making havoc of the church. He, we're going to find out later because there's a lot of interesting things. Saul's going hardcore. He's very passionate, believes what he's doing is right, and it's not just some kind of, I'm just, it's just a job, you know. It's just, you know, someone tells me I'm supposed to do this and I'm doing it because he told me to do it. No, he had passion in his heart and was doing this, okay. 
We're going to find this out. Uh, chapter 9. Let's jump over to chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Notice what it says there. Yet breathing out threatenings. I mean, Saul's really passionate. You guys are going to die. Whoever stands for Jesus Christ is going to die. I'm going to bound you, take you to Jerusalem, and just like with Stephen, they're probably going to be stoned and killed. Okay? And slaughter. The blood of, of Christians were on Saul's hands. He murdered a lot of Christians. This wasn't just, you know, just Stephen. No, he murdered a lot of Christians. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, that's Saul's persecution. We see there the passion of Saul, who later becomes Paul, the passion that he has. He's going hardcore. He's really attacking. He's a terror to, to Jesus Christ. We find that out here in a little bit. He's a big-time terror to the church. Verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. We're going to be talking about his conversion. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick up against the pricks. He, God didn't say, Why are you attacking my people? That's, you know, my Christians, my children, my brothers and sisters. Uh, there's studies we're going to do about how to be God's, how, G, how Jesus will be your friend, that's the best way to say it. Uh, what you have to do for Jesus to be your friend. And um, Paul's, he's not saying that, he's saying you're attacking me, okay? Paul, or Saul, was attacking Jesus Christ. The body of Christ were part of his, were flesh of his flesh and bones of his bones. He was attacking Jesus Christ. And this is his reaction. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And I believe he says it like that because, like I said, he was passionate about what he's doing. And I believe at the time, he thought what he was doing was right. You remember the verse that says that there are people that will kill true Bible-believing Christians thinking they do God's service. That they're doing the right thing, they're doing it for the Lord, and they're not. They're doing it for Satan. I believe Paul, at this before his conversion, thought he was doing right by God, and he was, you know, very passionate about what he was doing. Because when this happened, his attitude was, he trembled, and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? He didn't say, who are you to tell me what to do? He actually thought he was doing right, and he was corrected. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him in to Damascus. Okay. He was blind. And he was three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. It's important to remember Ananias. And to him said the Lord in visions, in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. That should be our attitude. Just want to throw that out there real quick. Okay, when um, Tim said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, when God calls us, we need to be saying, I, I am here, Lord. Okay? When God says, I need you to do this for me, I need you to do that, I am here, Lord. What do you want? Ask of me, and, and I'll do it. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, 
for behold, he prayeth. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now, Ananias, remember the whole point of this is walk and talk. Saul, we just read up there, uh, breathing out threatenings, talk, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, walk. His walk and talk before he got saved. And his, how do I say this, uh, sometimes his um, legacy, I want to say legacy, but I can't, I can't think of the word right now. Basically, everybody knew of him, okay? They knew of his actions, what he stood for, and what he was doing. So here's Ananias' response, 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Okay. Reputation, that's the word I'm looking for. Everybody knew Saul's reputation. So Ananias is saying, uh, are you sure? I know about this man. He hates Christians. He's killing Christians. He's very passionate. He's a huge uh, opponent of truth, of the church, of Jesus Christ. Okay. And here he hath authority, verse 14, And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And we'll find out, if you read about Paul afterwards, I believe a lot of his sorrow after getting saved was his past life. The old man. We read about it. Um, what is it? Uh, no grace. Merciless. Just standing there watching Stephen be killed for Jesus Christ. And he's standing there like, I agree with this. God, we're doing this in God's service. This is a good thing. And probably even loving it at the time. <laughs> After he got saved, he had a lot of sorrow. For I'll show him how many great things he must suffer for my name's sake. 17. And Ananias, notice what Ananias, Ananias does. He doesn't just go, P -p -p come on Lord, come on Lord, really? I just After what I just said? This is what Ananias does. He did the talk. Lord, do you know who this is? This is Saul of Tarsus. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So we see that he talked, and then he walked. He obeyed the Lord. He's talking with the Lord. The Lord's given word like us today. The Lord will show us things in here that we're supposed to do. He'd be saying, you're to do this. You're to do that. And we can say, but Lord, it's hard. Lord, it's just, I need courage. Lord, I, I don't know if I have the strength. I don't know if I have the strength. And then God shows you in his word, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. You're right, Lord. I'm going to go do it. Right? But Lord, I love video games. And the Lord's like, abstain from all appearance of evil. You read that. Yes, Lord, we're not to have evil in our presence. We're to do our best to make our home a godly home. Video game system's gone. Okay? Walk and talk. Okay? If I say that video games are evil and wicked, and they are, um, almost every game that you can come across, even the ones that look innocent, a lot of people like to play on ignorance. Oh, I didn't know, but they don't want to look into it. There's a lot of imagery uh, that dates back to Satanism and symbolism. And, you know, just you'll be shocked when you actually investigate a game. Even something as far as um, Mario Brothers. I had, I've came across a, and I couldn't find it again. There was a video of a guy who was going through a Christian. I believe he was a Christian. But I was newly saved when I came across this. 
and he goes through and shows how the dragon, uh, this part of the game and that part, of the, and he goes through and he breaks it down and shows how satanic the game really is, no matter, and it just looks innocent, but it's very satanic. So if I said that video games are wrong and then I turn around and people see me playing video games, I'm, I'm not walking the walk. I have the talk, but I'm not walking the walk. Okay, so Ananias had the talk saying, Lord, do you know who this man is? I mean, God knows who he is, but you know, Ananias is like, he could kill me. He could, you know, have me stoned. He could have me arrested. And, and God says, I want you to go do this. And Ananias is like, okay, that's where the walk comes in. And Ananias did what he was told. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be like that. We need to make sure that when God's asking us to do something, uh, that we're not just talk. You know, we stand for the Word of God, but we also need to live it. We need to stand firm. We need to do works meet for repentance. We need to do works that aren't um, that are profitable. Uh, uh, ministry. Uh, we're part of the ministry of reconciliation. We should be preaching the gospel. And I understand with me, I'm still lacking a lot of courage when it comes to actually verbally preaching the gospel, although God's given me courage a couple times. But handing out gospel tracts, that's the walk. I believe in the true gospel of the Bible, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Now, I also tell handing out gospel tracts, witnessing of people like me that the Lord is blessed with being having more of a uh, role, if you want to say, in the ministry of doing videos defending it. That's the walk. Mm -hmm. If you just stand for the gospel by saying, I believe this, and you get saved, but then you keep your mouth shut, you have the talk, but where's the walk? 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. Over here you see him, he's trembling. There's your repentance. And he trembling and astonished. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. He just said, this is Jesus Christ. He was going around slaughtering people left and right. For Jesus, because they believed in Jesus and they, had, they stand, stood for the name of Jesus. And he was killing all these people thinking he's doing God's service. And then when he found out that Jesus is, after what Stephen said... When he's looking up and he sees Jesus in heaven, he's trembling. That's repentance. And astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? What must I do? And God tells him what to do. Okay, he receives the Holy Spirit and he's baptized. 19. And when he had received meat and he was strengthened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. So he didn't just run out there and say, okay, I can do what I want, and I'm a leader, and I'm all... He hung out with the disciples there in Damascus. 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. Words and walk, because he's in the synagogues. That he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? Remember, he was trembling. He was killing and arresting people that were calling on the name of Jesus. Talk about a conversion. The lost to saved, there's a big change life. Let's see. Is not the, verse 21, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither? For that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. The walk. He not just had the talk, but he had the walk. Also you'll see here the new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, behold all things have become new the changed life that these easy believers and people hate. They hate it with a passion. passion. Oh, the change could happen. Or, um, 
you should do what's right, but it doesn't matter. Um, yes, it does. Okay, the changed life after salvation is proof of salvation, which we're going to find out here in a second. Okay, let's keep going. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying wait was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So now Saul was on the other side. His old man, he was on the side of killing the Christians. The new man, he's now one of the Christians that the Jews want to kill. The people he used to be part of. Now they want to kill him. Talk about a change. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. <coughs> Words. Give me a second. I've been dealing with a uh, little bit of a sore throat. But they didn't believe him. Because he was, it was just talk. He said he was one of them, but it was just talk. They didn't believe him. Let's see what happens. 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Two things just happened there. First of all, you had Barnabas, a witness, saying, uh, this Saul is not the same man as he used to be. Then, as he's witnessing, he's showing the walk of Paul, or later Paul, but Saul at this moment. He's, he's witnessing to the walk. It's no longer just talk, Paul's word. Now you have Barnabas witnessing and saying, here's his walk. Here's the evidence of of salvation, the changed life. He was on that side trying to kill Christians, now he's on our side, the body of Christ, and now he's he, uh, the Jews want to kill him. The other side of the coin, if you want to say. Okay. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. Which, when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Okay. The whole point of these talks, and the best example is Paul. You have a walk, you have a talk, and they better line up. Okay. Uh, Stephen had a walk and he had a talk. He stood for the Word of God. He stood for Jesus Christ to the point that he died for Jesus Christ. He preached the Word, disciples, it talked about a lot of people coming to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, we just talked about um, Saul later who becomes Paul. His old life, the walk and talk of his old life that was in sync. Okay. He threatened the church and he was killing, going out, arresting and killing anybody who called upon the name of Jesus. Okay. Walk and talk. Now his walk is he's preaching Jesus. Or his talk is he's preaching Jesus and the walk is he's going among people that want to kill him. He's going to the synagogues, he's going places and he's preaching the word of God. He's no longer walking, I think, with, um, with those people that were hunting down Christians. So you got the walk and the talk of the old man, and you got the walk and talk of the new man, and both, as we read, line up. When you have people out there claiming to be Christians, and their walk and their talk don't line up, that's a red flag. You can have someone fall back into temptation. You can have, um, and you have people, I've done it before, where we're ashamed and we put on the defensive because we're ashamed. But it doesn't take long for us to go, you know what, I apologize, I shouldn't have tried to defend this. I was ashamed of what I'd done. Okay. But when you got people saying one thing and doing another, 
like by saying, I love Jesus, but they don't keep his word. The Bible said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. This is Jesus speaking. Uh, the walk and the talk don't match up. They don't line up. Paul's did. And to run it really home, to really get home, because I want you to read this and let it sink in. The next verse, verse 31. I want it to sink in good, brothers and sisters in Christ. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified in walking in fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Let that think, sink in for a second. We just read about Saul and how passionate he was and how hard he was going after Christians. Saul gets saved. God saves Saul. He has the changed life. He's got the new walk and talk. And all of a sudden, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea. This is another proof on how big, if you want to say the campaign, like, like they say in war, the campaign that Paul had against the church. He was a terror to the church. And when he got saved... There was peace. The church, not peace, but rest throughout all Judea. They, didn't, they weren't scared as much as they used to be when Paul was lost, the old man. They weren't as scared as they used to be of, of someone coming in and grabbing them and hauling them off to prison, being stoned to death. Paul had a huge transformation, a huge changed life, conversion. I think I should use the word conversion. He had a huge conversion from being lost to being saved. His talk changed. His walk changed. Okay? Walk or talk. In this situation, both. And I'm pretty sure we're going to find out that a lot of times they go hand in hand. It's always going to be walk and talk and they better line up. But I do understand we're going to go through some stories where it talks about when to talk, sometimes you, you're to talk, sometimes you're not. And you're supposed to have the walk. You always should have the walk. But there's going to be times where it's just the walk and it'll speak for itself. There's times where the talk and walk will go hand in hand. But anytime there's talk, there better be a walk to back it up. So my encouragement to you, brothers and sisters of Christ in this, is to make sure that you're walking the walk. Don't fall into the trap of just doing the talk all the time and the walk all of a sudden you get to a standstill. You drop the cross and the cross just sets there and you're all talk. The Bible says to pick up your cross daily. Right? Jesus said uh, a man needs to deny himself and take up his cross daily. you got to deny yourself daily and you got to pick up your cross daily. When you drop it, you pick it back up. Make sure you're not one of those people that drops their cross and you become nothing but talk. And your talk doesn't line up with your walk. They don't line up. All right. Be encouraged, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, these are going to be a little bit more hitting home and more really in your face because in these last days, it's getting hard. Um, the lost world's pressuring us. Lost family members are pressuring us. Uh, the flesh is pressuring us. I've seen people, and I'm speaking for myself as one of those people, that have backslidden. Fallen into old sins. The old man um, has backslidden in the sense that um, a good example too is saying you should read. I always push that you should start your day with the Bible and end your day with the Bible. There's nothing. I mean, I can't see any Bible believing, God fearing man or woman saying that's wrong or you know I ain't gonna do that. But there are times where we get so wrapped up in what's going on in this in our lives that sometimes we forget to do that. So my talk is saying we, you should do that, encouraging you, brothers and sisters in Christ, but my walk needs to line up with it. And I can go through as many as I can of examples. But brothers and sisters in Christ, make sure, and I'm pleading with you, make sure that your walk lines up with your talk, and that your talk lines up with your walk. Right? Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I'll be praying for you. Please keep this ministry in your prayers. 
and my wife and I in your prayers. We always need your prayers. And we'll see you in the next Walk or Talk video.